Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. I got a lot of questions related to my recent video from the ITF Masters where I played a tournament. I've actually entered two. Uh, I hope to play more and uh, my knee is always a little bit of a question mark, but as long as I'm staying healthy, uh, I can compete and enjoy it a lot and meet other tennis nerds and it's a very social and fun thing to do under the, the guise of competition. Yeah, but what did I use and why? I did play with this frame. It's the Bubble Up Pure Aero 2023. I did remove the lead tape to test, but I actually had 2.5 grams of lead tape here and a leather grip uh, underneath. I actually also added about five grams to the top of the handle to make it more head light. So I bumped up the weight quite a bit of this racket and added a little bit of power to it up here. Still, I went for a very control-oriented string setup because I'm not a natural topspin player, so I went for a control string setup. Dunlop Explosive Bite, which is a very good string, 1.30 gauge. I strung it at 24 kilos, 53 pounds. This is not normally something I recommend to anyone with any arm hist with any history of tennis elbow or, or similar problems. Uh, I've had some tennis elbow issues in the past but not in recent times this frame is softer than the previous version i i definitely feel less uh, shock and bad feedback from this one i did like the other one it does give you more power and a bit more lift on the ball so i could see why some players prefer the older version from 2018 uh, but this one is better to me it re more resembles the old aero pro drives i think we all try them and, and like them whether it's 2013 or 10, that is your favorite, uh, or the first generation that Rafa uses, that's another story. But generally what you have is a denser string pattern in the center, so you have more control when you hit the center of the string bed, but you still get some forgiveness when the pattern is more open towards the side. So I used this one, uh, did work well, but I have this uh, thing that you might also struggle with. I hear it from a lot of players that I like using more powerful rackets generally against stronger opposition when I have less time to get to the ball and I need to kind of react and get a decent shot. Sometimes obviously you don't hit the center of the racket. And then when I play weaker or same level players, I feel like I can use a control frame. It works well. I have more time to hit the proper stroke. I'm not late as often on the ball as I am when I'm playing these stronger players with better technique and footwork than I have. So. Maybe you've noticed this phenomenon that that's what makes it tough for me to just have one racket in the bag. I don't know how I will feel on the day. Some days I feel like I need a lot more power. Some days I feel like I need more control. So I go to the tournament with five different rackets in the bag. I don't want this to be the case, but that's usually how it is because I don't know really how I will feel on the day when I'm actually on the court. The reason I decided to go for this one for my tournament was that I warmed up with Nikki. Uh, we did actually record some videos that you will get access to later on uh, that we're working on and uh, we had a session and I felt like I was hitting the ball well with this one so I said why not that me I still brought the other rackets though so I still had that option uh, to go back to something else and as you can see here in Spain I don't have as many rackets as I have in Malta but I still have a bunch of rackets um, I mean the E-Zone Tour which I recently oh, reviewed nice. uh, if you haven't checked that out you should uh, do struggle with this one on the one-hander so I, I don't use it as much as maybe I should it's a good stick my old Wilson 6195 that I still like quick commercial break thanks to our sponsor Fuzzy Yellow Balls check out their singles playbook this gives you a really strong backbone to certain patterns of play, how to beat pushers, counter punchers, what to do when the opponent starts playing servant volley and these types of things. So check out the singles playbook. Great tool. I bought it over a year ago and now they're a sponsor of this podcast. So big thanks to that. Check it out. The link is in the description. I do prefer the 1618 pattern though a little bit more nowadays. So trying to find a few of those, but it's not so easy. This racket will be reviewed within a near future. Uh, the Fury Armor Pro 98, also a frame I like, um, more like a pro staff and an extreme tour combination, interesting frame. Talking about the extreme tour, uh, another stick that has been good to me, uh, but sometimes I, I, I overhit with this one for whatever reason. It is uh, quite spin oriented, not as controlled as I tend to like. 
Um, so I tend not to want to be in the middle of tennis records. I want to either go for like pure arrow that I, where I know how to hit the ball. I adjust my swing accordingly or something like these two here. These are pro stock rackets. One is an H22 with uh, some customization on it, natural gut, sweet feeling frame. It's an 1820 version. This is also known as a Blade Pro. And this is one of my favorite rackets. Very, very good racket. Perhaps the best racket Wilson ever made. Uh, I think Nicky Run and a few other guys would agree with me on this, that the H22 or Blade Pro is probably Wilson's best racket of all time. The Blade 98 is also excellent. I think that would become in second. But I, I'm uh, a big fan of this one. And also the Legend, the Icon, the PT57A Head Pro Tour 630 uh, that I love hitting with. But against stronger players, I, I struggle with power. I can't generate enough power. Against weaker players, I feel like I can move the ball around and, and uh, hit without fear of missing. But against stronger players, this kind of sweet spot is, is not really manageable. So you see my conundrum. There's a lot of choice, too much choice. You're not going to get the control you need from this frame unless you have that natural topspin stroke and me with a flatter ball i like to attack it's kind of in my player dna and i'm keen to hear from your experience like what is your style and have you tried to change your style or uh, do you ever try to to ad adjust or adapt uh, for me i i feel like I naturally i want to get towards the net and, and play there i think my volleys are, are pretty pretty decent for for my level and i want to utilize those uh, but sometimes I just forget how to play, so I just play way too far back and, and start playing too passively. And uh, yeah, so you need to kind of stay true to your style and your, your technique. And when you have a racket setup you really like, uh, that's, that's easier than having this situation. I think it comes from too much testing, it just makes it very difficult. But, I mean, I'm not playing to compete, I'm playing to, uh, to do Tennis Nerd, and, and that's uh, part of my, my life now and passion, so I, it's good for me to test also how I react in different situations to different rackets. And, and this one worked well for me, but I'm still not 100% confident in it. I don't feel like this is the frame I should be playing with in the upcoming tournaments I'm going to play. Uh, I feel like I should find something a little bit in the middle and stick to that. And that could be my next experiment to see if I should try maybe get a few Gravity Pros or, or something that gives me a bit more power than a Prestige, uh, but is still 1820 and controlled. Uh, could be the solution to this issue. We will see. Uh, and more rackets to test, of course, so maybe I find something there that I, I really gel with. But for me, sometimes I get bored when I play with the same racket for too long. So I want to test something new. I think Henrik and I talked about this in a previous podcast, that yeah, you get bored with some rackets and you want to try. And I think it's sometimes a blessing for players who don't have this at racket testing addiction and they, they like to just play with one racket and they feel that they are confident with that. That helps build the muscle memory and obviously you're gonna play better uh, but testing new rackets and strings is a part of the fun for me so I, i'm probably gonna keep switching around a bit i could dial it in a bit more though uh, for for these itf tournaments if i wanna wanna compete on a good level so uh, that is my quest for now see what works in these more serious tournaments if you don't know what racket to choose check out my road to the right racket online course with an ebook and so on big thanks if you do that's all have a nice day and don't forget to play sometimes <laughs>